Hello, I'm Dr. Mohua Bhattacharji. Today we'll be discussing the welfare economy's Pareto optimality with the perfectly competition market. So we understand that the welfare economics Pareto optimality situation was something which was uh, uh, which we have explained with the efficiency in exchange, efficiency in uh, production allocation and product mix. Third one is efficiency in product mix. Now the question is this, where this kind of uh, uh, in the practically or where, when we can talk in the market, how these conditions we will be able to see them working. So mechanisms. So for that we have a, a simple model and that is the simplest model through which only we can prove it and that is the perfectly competitive market. So in the perfect competition only the Pareto optimality conditions can be, um, can be proved. So in this condition the perfectly competition the efficiency in exchange the first conditions will be fulfilled in this way. The marginal rate of substitution x and y will be equal to px by py because that is the only condition in which the IC uh, is equal to the uh, the budget line and so the budget line is something which is represented by px py and the rate of substitution of the other consumers preference is something which is represented by the mrsxy so in the condition of the uh, in the pareto optimality in the consumers uh, market the uh, pareto optimal equilibrium will become will be achieved when all the commodities as there is a one uniform price in all the market and there is the the firms are not a price maker but they are the price taker so that's why the prices of good x and y will be uniform and so we can take that base as an equity and we can then equate the marginal rate of substitution of commodity a and b so that is something the first condition of efficiency in exchange is explained so in the second condition mrts lk that is something which will be represented by the isoquent this is this one was indefinite curve. Now we have come to the isoquent, and then isoquent is something which will be tangenting to the uh, to the iso cost, and the iso cost is nothing but the ratio of the ratio of the prices of the two factors which is used. So if we have taken labor and capital, then W by R can be considered as the price ratio of the factors, and so that has to be equal to the MRTS LK. So the rate at which the factors have been substituted one for another should be equal to the prices of the two factors, the ratio of the prices of the two factors. And since again we have assumed there is a perfectly competitive factor market, so that's why we will be considering the prices of the labor and the capital doesn't change. And so that's why we can say that it is possible for the W by R of MRTS LK for commodity X be equate with the MRTS LK for commodity Y for the commodity Y. And the, the ratio is W by R, the factor price, the labor and the uh, capital. So this is our two efficiency in exchange and this is our efficiency in production and the third condition is the efficiency in product mix. So in the product mix as we know that it is something which is uh, which will be taking into consideration both the consumers and the producers and so for that case we have already discussed we will need the marginal rate of transformation x and y is equal to the px py and this is something which is of consumers part of the consumers will be paying and mcx mcy is something which the producers will be talking about and so these two things will be equate, equating to the rate of the transformation of the good one for the another so in this case we finally we reach the product mix equilibrium and when this ultimate condition is fulfilled we can we believe we we consider we reach the situation of parity optimality and it is con considered to be the best solution of the uh, in the welfare economics by Pareto. But the point was this. This one was something which was said by Pareto. That no one can be made better off without making some other worse off. But in practically when we talked about it and when we found about its implication, we found that truly in the world it doesn't happen like this. And the biggest problem is the perfectly competitive market assumption. It really doesn't exist. And so the application of this model became limited but still Pareto is obviously considered it to be the landmark contribution in the world of in the welfare economics because it is the it is the first effort to explain still now it is it is the uh, one of the ideal um, solution which is given in the 
in development world in economics so that's why it is considered to be the major um, starting point but now till date it has lots of modifications are done and lots of development is done in this optimal concept with keeping the base point as the same but the point the main problem with this one was that the contract curve p q r we understood that it is a pareto optimal point but it was not talking about the changes it was not talking how do we move from one contract curve equilibrium point to the one, another equilibrium point that is how we move from the point p to point q we know that when we reach the point p reach the point q we are in the best solution but we want to go from the one optimal solution to the another optimal solution with a change so pareto was slightly in dark about or what did not discuss about the changes which is happening and how to take up the change and talk in welfare economics that is there is a welfare with the change so the change perspective was not working in this model so it was a big challenge in the welfare economics world and so that's why a new concept by Keldor Hicks and Stutowski brought forward and that is called the new economic new welfare economics and w e new welfare economics and they brought a new principle that is called the compensation principle so what do the compensation principle say the compensation principle the word compensation itself says that some that there is a change so uh, Keldor and Hicks tried to explain that if someone is made better off and someone is worse off and the better off person can can make the worse off some improvement and still remain better off then it is also a welfare economics or it is a welfare in the economics so that's what the compensation principles have talked about which can be discussed in details